In this video, we're going to talk about modulus and conjugate of complex numbers. Now one line answer is modulus is nothing but the magnitude of the complex number and conjugate is nothing but the mirror image of that complex number. Mirror image if you take the real axis as the mirror. Let's dive deeper. Let's draw these axes. We have the real axis, we have the imaginary axis and this is our complex number. Let's call this Z. Okay. So the magnitude is this length from origin to this point. This length is going to be the magnitude of the complex number. Now to figure out the mod or the magnitude, we need to figure out the real and imaginary parts. For this complex number, this is going to be its real part and this is going to be its imaginary part. If they are A and B, the magnitude is square root of A square plus B square. This is the mod of this complex number. What about the conjugate? Well, if you take this axis as the mirror, you can flip this and say that this is going to be the mirror image of this complex number. So this yellow complex number, this is going to be the conjugate of this pink complex number. And what's this going to be? To reach this point, we're moving A units along the real axis and minus B units along the imaginary axis. Here we're going up and here we're going down. So if this is A plus IB, this is going to be a minus ib. So magnitude or mod is root a square plus b square and conjugate or the mirror image is a minus ib. If it was a plus ib, it's going to be a minus ib. This plus sign becomes the minus sign. This is how we write mod of z and this is how we write z bar or conjugate of z. So mod z is the modulus and z bar is the conjugate of the complex number z. Since this is root a square plus b square, all real values, we can say that mod z is a real number. And since this is a minus ib with a real part and an imaginary part, we can say that the conjugate is a complex number. All right. So mod is real and conjugate is complex. Now let's look at some properties of mod and conjugate. Mod first, if you have two complex numbers z1 and z2, you multiply them and then take the mod, you get the same thing as when you multiply their mods. The same works for division. If you divide them and then take the mod, you get the same thing as when you divide the mods. You divide the magnitude of Z1 with the magnitude of Z2. In this case, it goes without saying that Z2 or mod Z2 should not be equal to zero because when you divide by zero, math breaks. Okay, let's prove one of them. Let's prove this one. Let's take Z1 and Z2 as A plus IB and C plus ID. When you multiply them and expand, this is what you get. Now this becomes the real part and this becomes the imaginary part of their product. Now if you're taking the mod, you're saying it's square root of real part squared plus imaginary part squared. Real part is AC minus BD and imaginary part is AD plus BC. And if you expand, you'll get these six terms where these two get cancelled out. Minus 2ABCD plus 2ABCD. Cancelling them gives us these four terms. Now you can take things common. You can take A square common. It becomes A square times C square plus D square. Similarly, you can take B square common. It becomes B square times C square plus D square. And finally, this becomes A square plus B square times C square plus D square inside the square root. Now because these two things are real and positive, you can take them out of the square root. You can say that this is equal to root a square plus b square times root c square plus d square. Now this is the magnitude of the first complex number and this is the magnitude of the second complex number. So this means this is mod z1 times mod z2 and hence we've proved this first result. You can do the same thing for this one or you can apply multiplication to one of the reciprocals. You can try this on your own. Let's move to the other results of conjugates. The first one is very similar. If you multiply them and then take the conjugate, you can get the same thing as when you multiply their conjugates. This works for division as well. If you divide them first and then take the conjugate, it's the same thing as when you take their conjugates first and then divide. Again, provided mod of Z2 is not equal to zero. Let's prove this first one. If Z1 and Z2 are A plus IB and C plus ID, multiplying them gives this thing. This is our new complex number, their product. 
the real part is AC minus BD and the imaginary part is AD plus BC. Conjugate does one thing. It changes the sign of the imaginary part. So from plus we get to minus. This is the conjugate of this complex number. Now what happens when we take the conjugates first? Conjugate of Z1, Z1 bar is A minus IB and conjugate of Z2, which is Z2 bar, that's C minus ID. Let's take their conjugates and then multiply. So this becomes A minus IB times C minus ID. Cross multiplying gives us AC minus BD because we have minus minus plus, but I square as well. I square gives another negative sign. So this is AC minus BD. The real parts match. The imaginary part is AD and BC with negative signs. So this becomes minus I times AD plus BC. Again, the imaginary parts also match. So we can see that Z1, Z2 bar is same as Z1 bar times Z2 bar. Again, you can prove this one as well using the same process or you can take one of the reciprocals and multiply. Now for conjugates, we also have addition. Z1 plus Z2 bar is same as Z1 bar plus Z2 bar. Let's quickly prove this. Z1 and Z2 are A plus IB and C plus ID. So let's add them first. We get A plus IB plus C plus ID. Adding them adds their real parts, that's A plus C, and their imaginary parts, that's B plus D. Taking their conjugate puts a negative sign for the imaginary part. So we had plus here, now this becomes minus. Now rearranging this gives us A minus IB plus C minus ID. This is Z1 bar and this is Z2 bar. So Z1 plus Z2 bar is actually equal to Z1 bar plus Z2 bar. Now what works for addition also works for subtraction. So these are some results of modulus and conjugate of complex numbers. Now sometimes we use these to figure out multiplicative inverse of complex numbers. Let's do this with an example. Let's have a look. Root a square plus b square is mod of z. If we square them, we get a square plus b square here and mod z square here. So now we know that a square plus b square is equal to mod z square. What happens when we multiply this complex number with its conjugate? What happens when we have a plus ib times a minus ib? That's z times z bar. So if you multiply them, we get a times a, that's a square, plus b times b, that's b square, plus b times minus b, that's minus b square, but we also have i square, so minus minus becomes plus. This is plus b square, then we have plus IBA and then minus IAB. So these two cancel out. We get A square plus B square, which means something interesting is going on here. This thing A square plus B square is equal to mod Z square, but it's also equal to ZZ bar. So let's equate them. A square plus B square is equal to ZZ bar is equal to mod Z square. And this is a very famous result. ZZ bar is equal to mod Z square on both sides, we have real quantities. This is real. This means this is also real. Think about it. Take a complex number, multiply its conjugate, and you get a real number. Now, sometimes we use this to find the multiplicative inverse. If we take Z on the other side, we have one by Z. That's equal to Z bar upon mod Z square. That's Z bar by mod Z square. So to find the multiplicative inverse or the reciprocal of a complex number, find its conjugate and divide it by its mod square. So Z inverse or one by Z, that's Z bar by mod Z square. Let's take a quick example. If Z is two minus three I, if this is our complex number, find its multiplicative inverse. Pause the video, try this on your own. Okay, let's do this together. Now mod Z, the magnitude, that's A square plus B square square root, that's root of four plus nine, that's root of 13. So mod Z square is 13. And what's Z bar? If this is two minus three I, Z bar is two plus three I. So Z inverse, that's going to be two plus three I divided by 13. That's two by 13 plus three by 13 I. This is the real part and this is the imaginary part of the reciprocal of Z.